Hey, this is Necromancer from Ripper Radio. Right now I have a member of Dollar Lama. Ready here to do an interview. I'd like to say hello. The interview should stop. Um, let's start off with a little bit of a history of the band and how'd you guys get your start. Okay, sure. Well, uh, our band, Dollar Lama, has begun like, I think, from, from the start, I think it was from like 2002, and we were on another project. I was on another project with with some guys that are not on the band already, and we wanted to do something different, but with like some influences from the 90s, from the grunge scene, because we all related to that, and the you know, the thing started from there. So we we had no drummer. On, on, on that year, so we were searching for a new drummer, and when we got the, 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 the new guy, well, we started the, the band, and we were, and then that that was when we really started the band, and that when was when Dollar Lama started to, to jam. Cool. Um, so, what would you say your guys' main influences are? Well, <clears throat> nowadays our our main influences. I think it's, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's like uh, several mixes and several influences. Our, our backbone and from our history, from, like, from the band, is the, the sound of the 90s. But nowadays we are like, I don't, I don't know, it's a mix between like the southern movement, the sludge movement, and then with a little bit of, I don't know, maybe hardcore, if you want to get it. It's, I, I really don't know how to catalog our sound because it's, it's like, it's not, it's a, a power rock, but not metal, but I think maybe something related with sludge. And our influences are like, can go like from bands like Alice in Chains, like with Melvin's down every time I die. So you see, it's a little, it's a little bit of a splash from several bands, several influences that all together are. It's, it's a sound that we like. It's, it's the backbone from Dolan. Alrighty. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about your. This is the first album, The Grand Union. Um, what influenced the main writing on that? Uh, uh, you were talking about Grand Union, right? Well, Grand Union is our second album. Oh, second album? Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, in 2009, we, we re- issued uh, like a, uh, our first album that was called Under the Hurricane. And if, if for a, a, funny, a funny note here is, is that we, we released it first on the, on the United States. Uh, before here in Portugal, so we released it by with a label from Nashville, uh, and, uh, we, and and that, that was our first album. And the Grand Union is is a little bit different because in 2010 we we we, we had like a I don't know maybe a one year break, two years break tops because we wanted to really know what we were going to do about music and ourselves. And and then when we started jamming together already, again, with, with the, the same people that were in Dollar Lemon at that time, we all said that Grand Union should be like an album that could, people would listen and that could resonate in something like the name of the album, Grand Union, like a big union between us and our audience and our sound. And that's why we, we wanted to, to, to call it the, the record Grand Union. Because it talks about the union that we all have with our, our fans and, and the crowd and our audience that is still faithful with us even along all those years. So that's the main character and the main, I don't know, concept behind Grand Union. Uh, cool. Um, any future albums coming soon? Oh yeah, really. Uh, we, we are already writing the third album, so we hope that still like September, I don't know, October, we can go to studio and start recording the third album because we already have like a lot, a bunch of songs and the, the composition is really going very fast and, and 
it's, it's really cool because we have like different approaches uh, regarding songs, but the, the main core that, that is, it's our sound, it's still there. So I think people will still relate with the, the, the past albums like the Under the Recade and Grand Union. And with this new album, I think that we have a, a, some influences from another sound, but, but I think people will, will really like because it's, it, it has like a different dynamic. Because on this record, Red Union, we wanted to, to show that, hey, we are alive and we are here, we are still, and we still can do this. And with this, with this new album, we are like testing new approaches and creating different moods and different dynamics. So yes, we are really uh, hoping that like the beginning of the, ne of the next year, I don't know, maybe February, March, we can still like uh, release the, the new album. Cool, I look forward to playing some new stuff from you guys. Um, so how's the uh, music scene there in Portugal? Well, the music scene is in Portugal. It's, it's quite alive because people don't know that we are like a tiny country, but culturally we have like awesome artists and regarding all kinds of arts. And in Portugal we have a, a, a very live scene regarding music. The main problem here in Portugal is that the circuit of bands like the touring is very, very small. So you, if you want to do a tour here in Portugal, you can do like, imagine like 10 days and you already have done like the whole country, you know, because there aren't so much places for you to, 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 to play. But the, the, the scene here is quite, quite loud. Like we have different bands from different locations that are huge and, and, and people really don't have a notion because people from Portugal regarding music only know like bands like like Moonspell that is related like with, with metal and black metal uh, they don't relate with any other band so they don't know because we are really really small but we have like a, an awesome band that, that unfortunately they, uh, quitted uh, and they, they did the last show here in Portugal, like last week, and that, that is more than a thousand. More than a thousand have toured with bands like uh, Terror, like uh, Architects, uh, Bring Me the Horizon, like, like huge bands, and they are really, really huge here in Portugal. Every day that they do here, it's sold out. So I think the main problem here is we have like awesome bands with lots of potential, but we don't have so much places to play and we don't have like a, a, a very strong feedback when we go outside, except some bands like more than a thousand moon spell that, that they are the exception. We really don't have like, I don't know, maybe the capital or people still look at us like a tiny country. And I can give you the better example that I can give you about that is like, if. People know, like the band from Greece, like the Planet of Zeus, or like 1,000 Mars, they are huge in Europe and in, 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 in the United States also. They are like from a tiny country just like us, but, but you know, it's, it's, it's like two bands that broke up, you know, from going outside their country. And in Portugal, the same, you have like one, two, three band tops that can go outside and not more because people simply don't know the scene and the scene here is huge because we have like so many many good bands and they play they play like hell <laughs> and i can say this we play with cancer bands here in september uh, no but, uh, in july and i had liam from cancer bands like going out with with us and say, how can how, how, how can you guys are not so so well known outside? Because and, and we all said because we haven't toured outside. That's the main reason. Because maybe if we had the chance to tour outside, maybe people would know us better. So I think this is the main issue with bands from Portugal. They don't they don't get to tour outside so often. So our senior is not very well known. I think it's that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it all depends on your manager and your promotion and what. Oh, sure, that, that also, that also. You can, if you have the right manager and the right contacts, 
maybe you can do that. But like this, like I said, a tiny country, <laughs> like with with low investment, it's really really hard, man. And, and we like we have thousands of people that go in our Facebook and our website and say, hey, you guys are awesome. Why don't you come here at Belgium or why don't you come here? And we uh, had like an invitation to go to play at. Uh, I think it was a festival in. It's place it's in Portland called in Oregon, yeah, it's called the Shake the Earth Fest. And they and they all invited us to, to go there and play and we said, hey guys, we would love to play, but how can we how can we play, go play there? Because we don't have the money just to, to, to pay the, all the expenses that to do one show in one day. It's 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 freaking unbelievable. So you see it's not it's not easy, but maybe with the kind of contact and the right management in the right venues, maybe it's possible. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some finger crossing for right now. Like after the summer, we have a contact. Then maybe we can do some some like a good tour here in Europe. Let's see if that happens. If that happens, I, I, I know that our band name will will really get to to be known. I don't have any doubts about that because it's not because it's my band. But I really believe in our sound and the, and the, and the people that that are behind the band. We are like all our working guys, and and we are here like the people don't know. But our band exists like from like I said, 2002. So you know, we are like struggling, <laughs> and if if it isn't do it by ourselves. No one can do that, so it's just us doing the, all the stuff for our band. So right? it's just like this, and it's not like us. It's it's everyone here in Portugal. So you see, it's not easy. That's for sure. If, if anybody said that everything was easy, everybody would be doing it. So. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah, because I was gonna ask you if you had any pot prospects of coming to the states, but you know. I would love to do that. We have like um, a big contact there, and it's from from Patrick from Metal Nexus. The, Patrick is, is like, dude, that guy is a, it's a, a really a gentleman because he's, he's helping us with lots of stuff and, and with everything he can. He, he puts us in contact with the, the the guys from Saint Vitus and the Obsessed. He he he, he, flew, he, he currently paper. Plays our songs there. He's, 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 he's trying to help us getting some some big contacts there, just to do if we can do some dates. We have like uh, friends here from Portugal that already did that. It is called Miss Love. I don't know if you know it. It's a big store band from here in Portugal. They are they are they are labeled as Small Stone Records, and they already did some some tours back there. Uh, but we haven't uh, really had the, the opportunity to do that, but we would love that because we know that our sound is, is really good for people from the States. Everyone here in Portugal says it. They, 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 don't, they don't know really. Like people that don't know our band, when they listen to it, they say, you guys are not American or not? Do you guys come from Portugal? Because yeah, you, guys, you guys have like a really tight American sound. And that's the, the biggest, like, compliment that it could give us because we would really really love to go to the States because we know that in the States I think for my personal belief that it would be so much easier to to do some shows and, and I believe that people would really relate to our sound to our project because of that. Yeah, I, I do get a lot of requests from you guys. Um, a lot of the people I work with outside of the podcast, they're always like, can you play next? Because yeah. uh, they like a lot of the stuff you guys do. So. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife plays them on her show, too. So. You're getting awesome. a lot of airplay on my end. So. <laughs> that's awesome, man. We, we really need all, all the help that you can get. So. <laughs> that's why we do this. Uh, I know I was in a band when I was younger, and I know how hard it is to get out of your area and do more things, so that's why I started to show it's, it's really, I, I, Sometimes I think, if, if, if I'm from the tiny country like Portugal, like on, on the, the west side of the, of the Europe, and I think, how, how can that, that be for like people in, in the States? Because the States are huge, so I imagine it's so much harder 
for us that it's so much hard for you guys there. But I think you guys there, you have like a, a music culture that is totally different from us. Because you have the, like, hey man, let's be honest, rock and roll was born in the United States of America, so, hey, that, that's where it all, all came from. And, and I, I think sometimes people don't, don't get the real potential that our bands have just to play some rock and roll. Here in Portugal, I say, and the guys say they, they, they really do, do see it. They see a good band, they invest on it, they, 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 they make or make it happen. In Portugal, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, it's that way in Europe too. And in some ways, I wish states was a little more like Europe because Europe still does the word of mouth and you don't rely oh, yeah, on the radio. You, and... It's funny because in Europe, if you go to to England or if you go to the Nordic countries like the Sweden, Norway, Finland, they oh, they have like imagine their government. Uh, like uh, have um, payrolls for bands just to 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 do tours in Europe. If you, I I, I know of a band of friends of mine from Norway, and they told us, hey, do you know our government pays us a fee for us to go on tour just because they 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 recognize our music like culture from our country, so they basically pay us to do tours, and we were like. Really? <laughs> That's something so impossible to happen here in Portugal. Because uh, they, and they were really, really, and we were all gone away. Because we played, we did some shows here with, the, with Vintage Caravan, Dead Lord, and some other bands. And they are from, from, from the northern countries, from here and here. And they, are, they all have fees just to tour. And we were like, all gone away. It's, that, it's a, that's so so much possible to happen here in Portugal. And, and I think in the meantime, yeah, I don't I don't see it happen. But but they have, you see they have a different culture. Yeah, it's kind so, of their tourism yeah. spokesman. You know, they use that as their tourism base. <laughs> They're like spokesmen for their countries. But... Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's, it's it's a kind of like showing off our country also but people don't just don't see that they just see it as like a metal hats or some rock punk kids that you just want to do some noise you know <laughs> yeah. yeah metal's coming back pretty big in the states and you don't get looked as weird when people know you're into metal like mid late 90s or something they kind of look like you had or, or a leopard or something you were oh, yeah, yeah. so now it's starting to turn around and so hopefully, like you guys can get on a little more airplay in the states, and maybe bring you over here. Ah, and... uh, that would be awesome, man! Yeah. I would give my right arm just to go to play in the states. Really, people don't believe that, but I would. <laughs> because we all, we all were saying that it's like a, our dream. Just, hey, man, if we could just go to Hawaii, it could be just one day in the United States. It could be so much awesome. I, I really would have like a story to tell my daughter and to my grandson in the future, you know, hey, I, 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 did, I, I played in the United States, it would be so stupid. Right, cool. got anything else you'd like to say to your fans out there, or anyone who's listening to Ripper Radio, or not you guys? Or uh, I, I, I just wanted to say, yeah, I just wanted to say, hey, stick to your guns, believe in what you're doing, work hard, and play as more as you can. Show show your band name. Show your music, man. Don't don't believe in all the, the stuff that people said. Hey, just believe in your work and play hard as you can. And if you are like young kids starting, hey, it's the best thing you can do. Is like starting your own band. Don't go on those like fake shows from people singing. And hey, that's that's not the thing. Just Start your own band and do it by yourself, and it, it's so much like uh, rich. And it's so much like I don't know, man. It's, it's so good. So hey, believe in what you're doing and play hard, play fast, and have fun. It's just what I want to say. <laughs> well, I really uh, appreciate you coming on the show today for my hundredth episode. No problem. Um, it's a play. This will be airing next Friday. So I'll be sending you guys some information on your end. 
Okay, Brandon. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, anytime. Um, till, till next time. Um, okay, keep in touch. Everything, everything that you need from us, let us know, and we will kindly help you in everything that you need. All right, man. We'll probably have you on again when um, the new album comes out. We'll do another. Interview. Okay. Thank you so much once again. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Bye bye. Hey, Ryan.